Calling Transamerica plane 135. Calling Transamerica plane 135. Hello, 135. You can land any time. Feels clear. Surface wind southeast 7. Feels clear. Surface wind southeast 7. Better down any other time now, Wexley. Thank you, Miss Wagner. You've been very kind indeed. You're welcome. Did you have a nice trip, Judy? Great, Harry. Hi, Wexley, old boy. Hey, kid. The inimitable Wexley on time to the dot. That's on account of I used to punch a time clock. You're a great pilot, George. You ought to go places. I wouldn't mind as long as you were along. Well, will you at least share some coffee and donuts with me? Yes, if they're sugar donuts. Sugar they shall be. Judy. Oh, Judy. Hello, Tom. Judy. <laughs> Hello, George. Hello, Tom. Tell me, sis, what kind of a trip was it? Very dull. All right. Next time I throw in a couple of loops. <laughs> the funny little gleam in your eye. What goes on? I have some great news for you. Mr. Lackey's putting me on as a regular co-pilot. Swell, Tom. Great, kid. What trip are you going to fly? Lackey's putting me on with Three Star. Fine. Say, did Three Star arrive yet? Nobody's due. He's scheduled to take out the 610 for Frisco. Well, he'll probably arrive promptly at 65. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't do that. Every time he does those stunts, something happens to my stomach. That means now, not an hour from now. That's what I get for being nice to him and giving him three days vacation. Well, I guess that concludes this afternoon's performance. That boy sure can handle a plane. Standing in a plane is like shooting a gun that isn't loaded. Something's liable to go wrong. You want to go and meet him? No, come on, let's go get those donuts. All right. Hi, Greetings, greetings, friends, Romans, countrymen. I promise you that if I am elected mayor of this thriving little city of Laughing Gulch, I'll see that the skies are made safe for little children. There'll be a landing field in everybody's backyard. Yes, and if you keep that up, you'll need them. Uh oh, is that so? Is that so? How's that delicate little tummy of yours holding on, Wings? I wish you wouldn't do that, Three Star. Hey, Three Star. Well, if it isn't old nosedive himself. Well, what's on your mind? Mr. Lackey wants to see you in his office right away. Uh -oh. More than just. As soon as I get back, he start putting the screws on me. Hey, Tom, did Judy get in yet? Yes, yeah, a few minutes ago. Well, well, where is she? When the last I saw her, she was headed for the lunchroom with Wexley. He said he wanted to see you right away. You'd better make it snappy. Oh, I'll let him boil a little bit. Anyway, he always says the same thing in the same way every time. 
Joe, you can put all the sugar you want on that thing, but you'll never hide those little wrinkles of old age. Three days old anyway. Oh, no, Miss Wagner. We get them fresh every Monday, and today is Tuesday. Hiya, Spook. Hiya, Three Star. Hello. Hello. Hiya, Wexley. Hi. Cigarette? No. Hey, Joe, give me a cup of coffee. Half and half. Yes, sir. In a minute. Well, did you have a nice time in Tijuana? Yeah, I had a small time. First night in town, I got into a phony crap game, and they took me for everything I had. When I registered what I believed to be a righteous complaint, some big-nosed mug got a little peeved, and, well, one thing led to another, and I spent the last two days of my vacation in jail. <laughs> How have you been? Last time you were there, it cost you 400 bucks, didn't it? Uh, no, uh, that was only two. Will you stop? There you go again, throwing salt around. Um, Master Wexley, it appears that me and my gal Sal are about to have a falling out. And us being the kind of old-fashioned folks who don't like to quarrel in public, uh, would you all mind, uh, 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 taking off? Oh, I get it, a hint. Hmm. Well, I never like the coffee in this joint anymore. Will you excuse me? Hi, honey, how's your propeller? That's what I like about you, Three Star. You're so subtle. Just like a meat axe. Well, I don't like that lug hanging around you all the time anyway. You're supposed to be my gal, ain't you? I went to all the trouble to get you a Three Star bracelet. Didn't I? Thanks. I've been waiting for it for three months. You're welcome. You could have come down there to meet me now, couldn't you? You know I don't like those grandstand performances of yours. Someday you're going to break your neck. I'm heavily insured. I don't look so well in black. Oh, come on, Judy. Why don't you break down and confess that you're madly in love with me and that you'll marry me right now today, and I'll take the pledge. Listen, Bob, you're a swell guy. But gosh, being married to you would be just like living on a merry-go-round. Yeah, but you'll get more in a brass ring. Oh, Judy, just exactly what do you want in a husband anyway? I'm young and healthy, got my own plane, got over $1,500 in debts, and uh, nobody's drunk me under the table yet. But Judy, what's the use of delaying it like this? You know you love me, and we can scrap just as well after we're married. It's just what I've been thinking. Have yourself a donut. Thanks. Not even a fresh one. I don't want you to think that I'm butting in, Mr. Three Star, but you're using the wrong tactics. Now, when I was sparking my girl, I didn't keep chasing her. I felt I'd let her do all the chasing, and believe me, it worked out fine. Did, huh? Yes, sir. She married a friend of mine, and believe me, he stuck. Yeah. Hey! Didn't you get my message? Yeah, I got your message. Well? Well? Now, listen, Three Star, this is not your private airport. You just work here. And I won't have you stunning around this place, endangering other people's lives. Oh, stop talking like a Sunday editorial, will you? I'm not endangering anybody's lives. I won't have any more of it, do you understand? Oh, here, chew on this for a while. I'll fire you someday. You... Lucky, you're looking fit. I'm feeling fit. Cigar? No, thanks. Lucky, we have an important assignment for your service. I'm always happy to be of service to the government. Yes, you've always been very helpful. But this is the most important thing we've ever asked you to do for us. Ever hear of Clement Williams? Of the chemical research lab? Right. Everyone's heard of Mr. Williams' work. That's just the trouble. That's why we need your absolute cooperation. Williams has just perfected a high explosive that may revolutionize modern warfare. He's to leave tonight for Washington. He'll be accompanied by two Secret Service men. I want you to provide a plane and your most competent and trusted pilot, along with an able co-pilot. You can depend on me, Mr. Brownell. They'll be here a little before 10. I'll schedule a plane to hop off at 10 o'clock sharp. Good. Oh, uh, by the way, of course, this must be kept absolutely secret. Of course.
Yes, J.Y., Taggart speaking. Williams hops off for Washington tonight at 10 o'clock. I'll check on the pilot assigned and report back. Very well, I'll take care of the rest. Buffalo Bill. A dollar, please. What an eye you've got. Three star, you didn't miss a one. And you won yourself a swell stogie, mister. Something to her. She's saving him. I am not. Come on, let's get out of here. What is this? I don't know, sonny. You're too young. You might get here. You carry off here for a while. I'm Having a good time, kid? Oh, swell time. So far, I've watched you throw baseball, shoot arrows, play ping pong, shoot rifles, and play pool. Oh, lovely time. What Will you wrap yourselves around one of those T-bone steaks? That'll take the wrinkles out of your nose. Well, I'm getting awfully tired of walking. Hey, that's three star. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well? Hey, get off of me, will you? Say, I've been looking all over for you for the last three hours. Something tells me you are the bearer of bad tidings. Lackey wants you back at the airport right away. You and Tom. I knew it. I will make believe you didn't see us. Go on, go away, go away. Now, no fooling, Three Star. The skipper seems to be really excited about something this time. Come on, you better get going. You can drop me off home. He's doing this on purpose, I bet. Waits for my day off. Well, let's go. It sure sounds mysterious. Here, Santa Claus left that for you. Mine, too, bearer of the tidings. My feet are tired. I've been carrying these things around all evening. There you are. No, come on. Mr. Lackey's waiting for you. Where have I heard that one before? Where do we refuel? Kansas City. Okay, Skipper. We'll be ready at 10. And I don't want any trouble with you about this, Three Star. I may argue with you and scrap with you, but I know as well as you know you're the best pilot I've got. That's the only reason I'm sending you. I'd rather be shooting clay pipes. What did you say? Nothing. I was just talking to Tom. And I want both of you to keep your mouth shut about this. Oh, Skipper. <laughs> keep your nose up, Jason, old boy. those monkeys check over number three. Tom and I are hopping at 10. Right. Well, kid, we got about an hour. I think I'll run over to the dugout. I'll be back in time. I don't like to preach, Three Star, but the skipper said cold, sober. <laughs> don't worry, kid. Just cream soda. Oh, hello, Three Star. Hello, Pat. Give me a cream soda. Cream soda? That's a new name for cognac, ain't it? On the level. Cream soda. Now listen, Three Star. If you're not feeling well, I'll send and get a doctor. Cream soda, Pat. Cream soda. Maybe you'd like a lady finger with it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's just as big a shock to me, too. He's here. A dollar I beat you guys. Okay. All right. Hey, soldier. You want to get in this? Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind if I do. Buck, huh? Yeah. You don't mind if I see the board, do you? No, no, certainly not. Thanks. It's all set, Wings. You can take her out now. Huh? Well, it's about time, Slug. Get busy. 9.30. I wonder where Three Star is. Now, don't worry. He'll be here. All right, come on. Get it out. Pull it out. Well, here's my dollar. I'm in. This is the last one for me, boys. What's the matter? Too rich for your blood? You got a funny way of saying things. I don't like it. <laughs> he don't like it. <laughs> 
Three thousand, huh? That's pretty good for a start. All I need is a contact now. Uh-huh. That's all you need. Hey, keep your hands off the board. Excuse me, General. I must have slipped. Yeah, well, don't make a habit of slipping. No, sir. Okay, boys. I'm pulling out. Pushy boardy, takey money. Put that dough back. You're in, and you're going to stay in. So listen, pal, you've been looking for something all evening, and I'm going to give it to you. Special delivery. Hey! Central. Central, send an ambulance down to the dugout cafe quick. Yeah. Wings, come here. Right. You better call the dugout. He ought to be here. Calm yourself, kid. Calm yourself. Hello, is this the dugout? No, he's out. Out for the night. I just sent for an ambulance. What happened? What's up? Come on, tell me, Wings. Three star got in a scrap. Where you going? Well, I'm going to get him. He's got to get here. No chance, kid. Somebody slugged him. And besides, you want to be here. What are we going to do? Like you'll ground him if he finds out. Now, you want to stay put. If you're not here when that ship's ready to go, you'll get fired. Hello there. Seen Three Star? No, he... Well, I guess he'll be here. What's the matter, Tom? You look upset. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, what's the use of kidding? Maybe he can figure a way out. Why? Well, what's happened? Anything wrong? Look, Wexley. Don't say anything to anyone, but... Well, Three Star's supposed to take a special out. He was to be here at 10 o'clock, and... Well, he can't make it. Well, that's not so terrible. Oh, but it is. This was a secret trip. He's just got to get here, or like you'll ground him sure. Oh, that's different. Ten o'clock, you say, huh? Hey, wait a minute. Maybe I've got an idea. Everybody looks the same when they're sitting up in that cockpit, don't they? Yeah. Why don't you and I take that plane out? They'd never know it wasn't Three Star, and we'd save his hide and get the plane out on time, and that's the important thing, isn't it? See, that's not a bad idea. That's a good idea. All right, we've only got a few minutes. Let's get going, boys. Well, Mr. Brownell. This is Mr. Williams, Mr. Lackey. Very glad to know you, Mr. Williams. Glad to know you, sir. Everything is ready for you? Good. Right this way. Here they come. We've taken every precaution on this trip. Mr. Brownell, and I hope that Mr. Williams will be comfortable. That's fine. Well, by the way, I can get you a fireproof cover for that cylinder, Mr. Williams. That has been attended to, Mr. Laggy. This cylinder is absolutely fireproof. Well, we are. Careful. Okay, son. It's up to you now, three star. man of the service at the controls. Friends, Romans, countrymen. Well, what the... I promise you that if I'm elected mayor of this beautiful little city, I'll see that there's a landing field in everybody's backyard. Hello, Skipper. 
Free stuff. What are you doing here? And what's that bandage doing around your head? Bandage? Yes, bandage. bandage. Oh, oh, oh. I remember. Yeah, I got slugged down at the dugout. I thought I told you to stay sober. You're grounded. I tell you, I didn't have anything but a cream soda. These three guys Wait jumped a minute. on in. Who took that plane up? Why is it gone? Why, I... Uh, Who took it up? Uh, I... Who uh, took it up? Uh, why, Wexley... Wexley, he... I'll ground him for this, too. Who is this, Wexley? He's top flight. He'll get it through. I don't like it. Don't worry. He'll be disciplined. Come on. Come on, Come on. Come on. This is not a deep Why do you think it was a circus? Get out of here. Flash reports just came in. Plane number three crashed in flames near Highvale. You get the exact position of the crack up. Have a plane ready to take me up as soon as possible. And get John Brownell on the phone immediately. The Williams formula, authorities say, is for a highly revolutionary new form of high explosive. To preclude its falling into wrong hands, state police and the Aero Patrol are combing the area of the crash. An order has been issued to search any planes or autos attempting to cross the border. Come on, you guys, get up. Come on, rise and shine. Hey, three stars. Three stars. Come on, hey, wake up, will you? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the idea? The skipper wants to see you right away. Get ready to take off. Hey, what is this, a gag? No, it ain't a gag. He's got the whole airport boiling. Come on, don't go back to sleep now. Well, my compliments to the skipper and tell him to go tear a herring. Geraldine. Well, come on, come on, get dressed. What's the matter? The skipper wants us. Wants us for a fourth at bridge. You're going to be the dummy. Come on. Come on. It's nearly daylight now. Hey, what's the idea of the Paul Revere? Number three just cracked up in the lower Sierras near Highvale. First reports indicate it was an explosion of some kind. Well, have you, have you heard anything about Tom? I've told you everything I heard. Come on, you and I are flying up there. You know, Skipper, you're a pretty regular guy at that. All right, don't talk. Come on, let's get in the plane. Go on, beat it, Wings. And remember, not a word about this to Judy. You know, we're in a fine jam if that cylinder's lost. Yeah, I know it, Skipper. I sure hope they find it. It's not that cylinder that's got me down. Yeah, I know how you feel. Yeah, no regulation against a pile of chewing. Thanks. All right, let's go. Well, Brownell, did you find the cylinder? No, Tracer. All we found is some scattered wreckage, some shoe leather. This wasn't just an explosion. We're convinced this plane was blown up, some kind of time bomb. Can I be of any help? We'll have the Air Patrol men handle this. All right. I'll have this entire area patrolled from the air and have state police on the ground. If anyone did get that cylinder, we'll find it. 
By the way, I thought you grounded this man. He's too good a man to keep on the ground. Well, I want you to keep him grounded. He can take the ship back, but keep him out of the air until this thing's cleared up. Okay. I'll be going back. I'll get in touch with you later. Hello? No. No, they didn't get back yet. We've heard nothing. Wings! Where's Jason? Did he go up with them? No, he didn't show up yet. I've looked all over the place for him. I can't find him nowhere. Gee, Wings, I'm getting awfully worried. Seems to me they've been gone an awful long time. No, that's not them. I know that motor a mile away. I can't wait any longer. There's no telling when they'll be back. Where are you going? I'm driving up to Highvale. I'm sorry, miss. You can't pass here. The road is blocked. You'll have to detour. But my brother was in that plane that crashed. I've got to get there. I'm sorry, but we got orders. The entire crash area is closed. Oh, please, officer. You've got to let me get there. I'm sorry, but I can't. Well, can I get some gasoline up here? All right, but the other end of the road is blocked. All right, baby. Shall I fill her up, miss? No. Do you know of any way I can get through to the crash area? Oh, no, ma'am. They ain't letting nobody through. My brother was in that plane that went down. I've got to get there if I can. Oh, gee, miss, that's tough. Don't you know of any side roads that'll take me back on the main road again? Oh, now, wait. Let's see. Yeah. You can go back here three miles. You'll come to a dirt road. And there's a fence with an old gate hanging on it. It's a bad 15 miles through the mountains, all right. But I don't know whether they're patrolling that road or not, but you can take a chance anyway. Now, you back up and go that side of the gas tanks. Thanks. Oh, that's all right. And say, I'm awful sorry about your brother. Thank you. Jason, sightseeing? No. That looks like young Wagner's sister. Yeah? I wonder if she knows where she's going. That's what I'm wondering. Come on, step on it. Put the car in the garage, Eddie. Okay.
What's all the excitement about? Listen, we just passed a car on the road, and I'm sure it was young Wagner's sister. I don't know what she's doing up here, but I'm quite sure it was her. Well, if she's blundered into something, it's going to be too bad for her. If she comes here, you two fellas stall her. Tell her you're federal men and get her in here. Yes, sir. Well, sit down, have a drink. Yeah, I don't mind if I do. Everything go all right? Yeah, we got what we wanted. Yeah, the roads are filled with cops, and there are a hundred planes in the air. Yeah, I know that. We'll figure some way out. What are we going to do about this girl? George! Yeah? Come on down here. Quick. What's up? Listen, Jason tells me that Wagner's sister's on her way here. What are you doing up this way, miss? Why, I must have gotten onto the wrong road. I thought this would take me to the main highway. Are you sure of that? Of course I'm sure of it. Who are you? I'm a federal man. This area has just been closed, and we're stopping all cars. If you want to go on through, uh, you'll have to come inside and see the captain. I don't think there's anything to get excited about. As a matter of fact, I think it's a rather lucky break. Yes, how? Well, you know, there's not much chance of us getting this cylinder out of the country with them searching every car and plane. Our best chance is to get her to go to Tijuana. I suppose all we've got to do is to ask her. No, I think I can invent a good enough story to get her to go. Then we plant the cylinder in her car. Now, they'll never search her car when they know that she's wagging her sister. That's probably her. I'll go upstairs and then come in on her. You better get out. Let us handle this. What is it, Sergeant? This young lady got by the officers on the lower road, Captain. Thought maybe you'd like to talk to her. I see. Well, come in, please. So, you sit down. Just exactly what is this? Who are you? I'm Judy Wagner. My brother Tom was in that crash. Oh, yes. How did you happen to come here? I've explained all that to your men. It was purely an accident. I'm trying to get through to the scene of the crash. George! Judy! Judy, what in the world are you doing here? George! Why? Why, this is Tom Wagner's sister. Yes, I know. She just told me. George, please tell me. What about Tom? Look, don't you think that it's only fair, as long as she's here, to tell her... Well, whatever you learn, will you promise to keep in strictest confidence? Of course. Judy, come here. I've got some news for you, Judy. Good news. Tom is alive. Alive? Well, where is he? Why didn't he get in touch with me? All right, honey, I'll tell you as quickly as I can. A few hours after we started, one of the supposed Secret Service men ordered Tom and me to bail out in one of the parachutes. As we were falling, we saw him bail out in Tom's parachute. And then, in a little bit, came the explosion. George, tell me! Wait a minute. We got in touch with the authorities immediately, and we've been working secretly with them. Now, they've located a man in Tijuana whom they believe to be one of the bogus Secret Service men. And they sent for Tom just a little while ago to come over and identify him. Is he all right? He's perfectly all right. Of course, he'll have to stay in Tijuana a few days. Can I see him? Yes, I think that'll be all right. If you go there. When can I go? Look, don't you think you'd better rest up today after your trip and start in the morning? Yes, I guess you're right. Gosh, I feel better. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. Wouldn't you like to wash up and take a nap? Yes, thanks. I will. Good. Come on upstairs. Come on, have a nice nap. Don't worry about anything. We'll call you when dinner's ready. Thanks. This one? Yeah, watch out for the paint. It's just been finished. Right. Hook, line, and sinker. Did I put on an actor? Did I put on an actor? <laughs> By tomorrow night, we'll be in Tijuana, and that cylinder will be safely across the border. Let's put it in our car so only our men can find it. Sure, I'll do that. We'll follow by plane. Then if we're stopped, all they'll find will be the usual baggage of two weekend visitors to Mexico. Huh?
You know, Skipper, this is going to be mighty tough on Judy. She probably knows something about it already. Yeah. And what she doesn't know, I'm not going to like telling her. Gee, I'm glad to see you back. We're glad to be back. Anything go wrong? Yeah, we had motor trouble. You certainly turned out to be a swell mechanic. Well, what about the crack-up? Was everybody? Yeah, everybody. Uh, Judy's been looking for you. Did she go home? Uh, no, she drove up to Highvale to find you. When'd she leave? Early this morning. She shouldn't have done that. They'll never let her through. She'll just have that whole trip for nothing. You shouldn't have let her go. Oh, gee, I... I... Oh, wings. No, she hasn't been in since early this morning. Well, will you tell her to please call me no matter what time she gets in? Sure, I will. Uh, did they find out anything about her brother? She sure is upset about that. Sure. I'll tell her. Good night. Well, how's One Punch Sullivan? Hey, I've been waiting around here for you all day. Yeah, what's trouble with that big brain of yours, Pat? Well, you know them three mugs that jumped you... Uh, give me a cup of coffee first, will you? Make it black. You know them three mugs that jumped you last night? No, them. Boy, I'll never forget them. Well, I had a funny hunch about that three star. I never seen them guys before in my life. But it seemed to me that they was just aching to start that scrap with you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and another thing I want you to know that makes me think that there was something fishy. This morning, when I was driving over here to open up, I seen them same three mugs in the sedan pick up Jason and head out of town. Jason? You sure of that? Sure, I'm sure. A man knows what he sees when he sees it, don't he? Jason. Thanks, Pat. I'll bet you a month's salary Jason's mixed up in this thing. Why isn't he here? Why haven't you heard from him? Listen, I've been going to the dugout for years. And why is it that the night that I'm supposed to take up a special plane, I suddenly get slugged by three tramps who know Jason? All right, let's take a look around. Okay. Yeah. There must be a wire leading someplace. Yeah. Here it is. It's along here. Does it go through? Yeah, sure it does. That looks like it. Pull the chair away, will you? Well, here's a wire. Let's see where it goes. There you are, Skipper. That tells the tale. You're right, Three Star. We've got to let Brownell know about this as soon as possible. If he isn't back here by morning, you fly up to Highvale and tell him what we found. Well, I could go now. You're going to bed now. I don't want any more crack-ups. You take off at dawn. Okay. I know how you framed that fight in the dugout, but how did you manage, Wexley? Well, it was perfectly simple. You know, we had a time bomb planted in the plane. And a few hours after we started, Answered him with a slight clunk on the beam with a monkey wrench. He didn't ask any more questions. Then I took a small gas bulb and threw it back into the passenger compartment. Williams and the Federal men didn't seem to like it very much. Then I set the controls of the plane and walked back and got the cylinder. And after that, it was just a matter of throwing the time bomb switch and bailing out. And a few minutes after I'd bailed out, why, the bomb exploded. Well, I should say that was very well done. And by this time tomorrow, Miss Wagner will have obligingly taken the cylinder across the border. We will have gotten it, and our work will be done. And that will be that. 
Dinner's about ready. You better call her. Mm. You get out before she comes down. Okay. Hey, Judy. Judy! Yes? Dinner is served, madame. I'll be down in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to interrupt this program for just a moment to report a special news flash which just came in. The battered body of Tom Wagner, pilot on the Transamerica plane that crashed early yesterday morning, was found by Aero Police a few hundred yards from... Judy, you look refreshed. I am. What have we got for dinner? I'm afraid it's sort of a bachelor dinner. Lamb chops and potatoes. Swell. You tell Brownell if there's anything we can do for him at this end, I'll be waiting. Right, Skipper. If Judy gets in touch with you, will you please tell her I called her two or three times? Didn't she get home? No, and that's just what I'm a little worried about. Well, after you see Brownell, hop over to Highvale. Maybe she stayed at the hotel. Thanks, Skipper. I'll do that. You report to me as soon as you can. Well, now, what's the matter with you? I don't think I'd better go up. Why not? Well, this stomach of mine ain't feeling too good. You're coming along with me and no more arguments. I tell you, I get sick every time I go up. I'll make a fire out of you if I have to kill you. Uh, with me, it's just one thing after another. Stick with me, kid, and you'll be a hero yet. Uh, what fun is there winning a medal if they bury you with it? I don't know how a guy like 
like you ever passed his pilot's test. I don't either. I was sick for four days after that. Hey, look down there. Do you see what I see? Yeah. I'm going to set her down and find out what it's all about. Hey, what'd you shut your motor off for? If you don't mind pin feathers, I'd like to set her down without announcing my arrival. You're staying right here. And listen, get this straight. If you hear the slightest sign of trouble, hop right off. Who? Me? Listen, punk, I'm only going to tell you once. If I get into a jam, you head this crate north. There's an aero patrol flying over the crash area. Get them back here. But Three Star, I ain't done any flying in four years. And I don't think I can get this plane down. Well, I never heard of anybody ever leaving one up there. Go on, get in that back cockpit. It's time you got started again anyway. And remember now, if you hear any sign of trouble at all, you take off. Come on, darling. back to the lodge. Wixley, get the plane out. We've got to run for it. I'll get the cylinder. What about her? We'll take her with us. All right.
right places, we'll have to fight. If I see any strange planes, I'll shoot them down. Okay, you ready? Yeah. If anybody shows up, you guys better run for it. comes to planes. Looks like time to move. Up to now, you've had a pleasant trip. But I'm afraid you're going to have a rough landing. Come on. Come on, get to the car. There's a patrol plane landing out here. Come on, Joe. Don't be a sucker. Let's get out of here. Say, what's the matter with you? Don't you know how to fly a plane? No. You... You better get those guys in a car. Those are the crooks you want. They got Eddie. Pick him up! Out of that car. Come on, step on it. Venom. Say, what happened to you? What's the matter? Never mind. Oh, I'm trying to get you out of this. Get me out, will you? Oh, there. Well, hey, Commander. Wexley's alive. He's just hopping off in that black crate out there. And he's got the Williams formula with him. Saunders, I'll take care of these men. Broadcast the following alarm. All police planes. Scout for black plane. Williams formula aboard. Take no chances. If the pilot resists, shoot him down. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. You can't do that. There's a girl in that plane. I'm sorry. We can't help that. Come on, Wayne. Here, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't go... Hey, we haven't even got a gun. Never mind. Come on, get in here. <laughs> now what? This might come in handy. Come on, get in here. Formula aboard. Take no chances. If pilot resists, shoot him down. That is all. To further orders. Hey! How do you know where to look for them? They're probably headed for the border.
Two star! We ain't got a gun! Let's turn around and go back! Take it easy! Oh, gee, that's swell. Uh, are you all right, honey? Are you? Oh, grand. Hey, three star! Three star! Look! It must be the Arrow Patrol. Mr. Halsey, I want you to know that... Wait a minute, wait a minute, Brownell. You better call him three star. He doesn't know who you're talking to. <laughs> all right, then. Three star? You've done the government a great service, and I'll see that you're... There's just one thing that I want from the government. What's that? About $19.50. What's that for? That'll pay for all that gasoline I used up in that chase. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll arrange for that, though it may take an act of Congress. But seriously, I want to thank you. Thanks. Congratulations, Three Star. But don't forget, we're running an airfield here. I want you to take the 810 to Kansas City tonight. Sorry, Skipper, you'll have to take up that 810 yourself. I'm not fooling with you, Three Star. Seems to me that about two days ago, you grounded me for ten days. That just gives us eight days for a honeymoon. <laughs> well, I don't want to countermand my own orders. Okay, Skipper. Mm -hmm. 